Hi, thanks for tuning in to today's Property Apprentice podcast. I'm Debbie Roberts, one of the founding owners of the company. So today I wanted to explain what the announcement from the bank yesterday, which was the 31st of April, uh, when the Reserve Bank announced that they're removing the LVR restrictions for at least the next 12 months. So um, what I wanted to do was explain a little bit of the history and then what that might mean moving forward. First time that the loan to value restrictions were imposed imposed in New Zealand was October 2013. So they've been in place for a long time. Uh, they were introduced as a macro prudential financial stability tool. Now there's a tongue twister if you ever wanted to hear one. So the reason that it was introduced was to slow down the property market. And to start with the restrictions were imposed originally on property investors. So that helped first time buyers uh, get their foot into the property market without feeling like they were competing with property investors. So, and over the years, um, things changed, you know, the amount of deposit that you needed. So to start with, the reason, as I said, was to reduce the activity in the property market, and it certainly worked. So instead of having to have, as a property investor, instead of needing 20% deposit, so 20% of the purchase price or registered valuation, whichever figure was lowest, it it went from 20% up to 30%, 40%, you know, back to 30%. So it depended on when you were where you were buying as well. So if you were buying an investment property in Auckland at one period, you needed to have a 40% deposit and 30% for everyone else, everywhere else around the country. So the reasoning behind the restrictions was to slow down the market, as I said before, and the reason that they wanted to slow down the market was so that when we eventually ended up into an economic recession, they wanted to reduce the impact on the housing market. So if they had not slowed down the property market, it was a higher risk that house prices would crash. So in that respect, the loan to value re restrictions have actually done their job really well because what it meant was that people had to have a bigger deposit to start with. So it gave them a bigger buffer if prices fell. Now this was completely different to what we saw before the global financial crisis. You know, heading into the global financial crisis, home buyers were able to borrow 100% and um, there wasn't any such thing as the responsible lending code, which we have in place now. So a lot of things have changed since then. You know, back pre-GFC, you didn't even have to prove your income. You could just literally, if you almost, it's a slight exaggeration, if you had a pulse, you could get a loan. So it is a lot harder to get lending now, which is a good thing. So some of these restrictions for home buyers up until yesterday, or up until today, strictly speaking, as a home buyer, you would need to have 20% deposit. And if you were buying a new build, you could potentially borrow up to 95%. Now, a certain amount of the bank's total lending was allowed to be first or to home buyers who needed more than 80% um, lending. So in other words, they could allow a certain percentage of their total lending to people who needed less or who had less than 20% deposit. Now, following the removal of those loan to value restrictions, that means potentially home buyers could buy a home with as little as 5% deposit. For property investors, the general rule has always been 20% deposit. So the Reserve Bank restrictions for the LVR meant that we had to have a bigger deposit. So now we are assuming that that means that instead of having to have a 30% deposit, which is what the rule was yesterday for property investment, unless you were buying a new build, in which case you could then borrow 80%, so you only needed a 20% deposit, as effective from today, with those restrictions being lifted, we're expecting that it's going to go back to the normal rule for property investors, which is 20% deposit, regardless of whether it's a new build or not. So some of the things that we're waiting to hear 
Uh, we haven't yet heard from the banks to see how they are going to respond to this. The mortgage brokers that we spoke to recently, they've told us that they're expecting to hear from the banks anytime within the next week up to the next three or four weeks from now. So how the banks react to this could vary greatly from bank to bank. This is a really important time for you to get in touch with an independent mortgage advisor. And what I mean by an independent mortgage advisor or mortgage broker, as most people call them, an independent mortgage advisor works with all of the different banks and all of the non-bank lenders as well. So essentially they work for you rather than one particular lender, which means they're in a much better position to give you the right financial advice for your individual situation. If you're dealing with the bank directly yourself, then the bank can only tell you about their lending products and what they can do as a business for you. So this is the reason that we've always recommended independent mortgage advisors uh, to get that information from. And the best part about this is that using a mortgage advisor doesn't cost you anything. It's a general rule anyway. Mortgage advisors get paid by the bank, so that's how they receive their commission on the lending. So you don't have to pay to have someone working on your team for you in your individual situation. So we will wait and see what happens as far as the bank's announcements, how they're going to handle the restrictions on the deposits being removed. We are expecting that to a certain extent, this is, this is certainly going to make things easier for property investors. We're not quite sure how it's going to affect home buyers because the banks themselves are quite risk averse and whereas previously historically property investors have always needed a 20% deposit now up to yesterday they needed a 30% so it's relatively risk free for a bank to change their rules to go back from 30% back to the usual for property investors which is a 20% deposit so that doesn't actually give them much risk as far as a lender goes as long as you still meet the debt servicing side of the equation because this is the thing with bank lending you need to have both enough deposit or equity to tick the box for the bank as far as a deposit requirement goes but you also have to have enough provable income to meet their debt servicing calculations all the banks work differently when it comes to debt servicing calculations so from a bank's perspective, potentially it's less risky to remove the deposit restrictions for property investors. For home buyers, I think it's unlikely that every bank is going to be willing to lend 95% to a home buyer in every situation. Uh, I think that the ones that will lend up to 95%, meaning home buyers need just a 5% deposit, I think that'll be very case by case. So again, this is where an independent mortgage advisor can help you with that. Potentially, this is going to help property investors more than home buyers, because as a general rule, property investors, especially those that have been in the game for a bit longer, they tend to have much larger equity than your average home buyer. So having said that, there's a common thing that gets put out in the media especially that property investors compete with home buyers and it's not true property investors buy based on the numbers any property investor who is actually competing with home buyers in our opinion they are doing it wrong because you should not be competing with home buyers as an investor you should be buying a property based on the rental return the discount on purchase price, the available equity in the purchase that you're making, so how much equity you've got in the deal and potential to increase the equity after purchase as well. Whereas home buyers tend to look at a property from an emotional perspective. Do they like the place? Can they see themselves living there? And can they afford to pay the mortgage payments on that? So the only property investors that compete with home buyers tend to be the mum and dad who think that 
the key to success with property investing is to buy a home that they could see themselves living in as well. That does not make for a good long-term investment in most situations. For property investors, they need to be buying based on the numbers, as I just explained. So it's very, very rare that you would see a property investor competing price-wise with home buyers. As I mentioned, the only ones that compete on price with home buyers are the novice investors that don't know how to do it properly. Something that I think would make a lot more sense and certainly help home buyers a lot more. I mean, it would also help property investors too to get into the property market, which could stimulate a lot of economic activity. At the moment, the debt servicing calculations that banks are using are really strict. So if we compare what the debt servicing calculations in New Zealand are compared to what the debt servicing calculations in Australia are, the criteria to meet bank's approval in New Zealand is twice as hard as it is in Australia. What I mean by that is the banks crunch the numbers on how much of your income is needed to cover the cost of a mortgage if the interest rates were here, right? And so if the interest rates were anywhere from 7.2% to you know 7.5%, um, we've seen some of the 6.8 type thing. But today's interest rates are much lower than that. And there's not much indication that they're going to increase anytime soon. You know, most of the economists are saying that interest rates, we can expect them to stay low for at least the next 12 months potentially the next two to three years. So there's not much chance that interest rates are gonna skyrocket, and yet the banks are still calculating the debt servicing side of the equation on a much higher um, ratio, you know, higher percentage um, interest rate than what you're actually going to be paying. And as I mentioned, twice as high as what they're crunching the numbers in Australia. Now, don't forget, our banks in New Zealand, the four main banks, are all Australian-owned banks. So do you think that sounds fair? Because I don't, personally. So anyway, let's um, make a bit of noise and see if we can get some uh, New Zealand bankers to put a bit of pressure on their Australian owners to say, hey, you know, let's play ball. Yeah, I think that would certainly make life a lot easier for people that are looking at entering the property market if they relax those restrictions even just a little bit on the debt servicing side of the equation. That would certainly make a lot more difference to more purchases than the Reserve Bank restrictions on the loan to value ratios or the deposits required. Okay, so those are my two cents worth on uh, yesterday's announcement from the Reserve Bank of New Zealand. And uh, if you want to learn some more about property, uh, whether you're a home buyer or an investor, head along to our website, which is propertyapprentice.co.nz. We've got a lot of free tools, a lot of free resources there, ebook and a recording of a webinar that I did recently with one of New Zealand's leading mortgage brokers mortgage advisors. Uh, you can also register for one of our upcoming free online training events uh, using our website propertyapprentice.co.nz. So we'll look forward to seeing you sometime online soon if we haven't already. Thanks for watching.